Okay, let's get started by solving this problem. Let's say we had this heavy uh, bar of mass M sort of pinned to the building, and we're holding it up with a cable, and it really needs to be at the angle theta. So the question is, what tension do we need? So let's calculate the tension in terms of what we're given here. Okay. All right, so to get started, I'd probably start by thinking about all the external forces. And in this case, the system really is just the bar. All right, we're going to think about the bar. We're going to put its axis of rotation right here, where it touches the building. So this is rotation axis. So that's the wise place to put it. And the forces we think about, well, there's the mass of, or the weight of the bar. So mg we know, is act, we know acts at the center of mass, which for a uniform bar is at the center. Right, so there's mg. We'll give it some mass m and some length l. So we know that this acts at l over 2. And there's another force at play here. The building, or the wall of the building, does push on the bar, and the bar pushes back on the building. So if the system is the bar, system, let's make it very clear. We're just thinking about the bar here. Then we want to think about the forces the wall applies to the bar. Right? So there's going to be one. I'm just going to call them Fx and Fy. Here we go. Let's just go ahead and draw it this way. Fx is how the, the wall pushes this way on the bar. Uh, and then Fy is uh, how it pushes up or down on the bar. Right? So we'll say up. Right? So that's just what the building is applying. And then the other ones, of course, we know are mg and t, pulling up at theta. There they are. OK, so as I uh, said before, we're really just going to use three of those six equations. We're going to think of the sum of the forces in the x, some of the forces in the y, and we're going to think about torques and angular motion around this axis, because all those have to add up to be 0. So first, let's do the sum of the forces in the x equals 0. So what's in the x? It looks like just uh, f of x we're going is positive. What the building applies to the bar uh, forward as it pushes against the tension component pulling it back. Right? So there's theta, so it's the cosine of theta. Minus t cosine theta equals 0. So there's one, except these are both unknowns. We don't know f of x, or we don't know the force of the building, and we don't know the tension. So let's use another one. How about the sum of the forces in the y? That also has to be true, because it's not moving in the y. Zero velocity, zero acceleration. Let's see, we'll call positive up. So this is the force the building applies, and the y is positive, uh, minus mg, because it's down. And then it's the sine component, plus t sine theta equals 0. Let's see, well now we're up to three unknowns, right? Unknown is fx, unknown is the tension, and unknown is fy and the tension. We only have two equations. We need one more equation. Well, we have six to choose from. But let's go with rotation about, we need an extra rotation right there. Rotation about this point right here. So this would be the sum of the torques uh, equals 0. And about, you know, obviously about the axis rotation we chose, we're putting the origin here, and it's about the, the z axis. So let's see. Um, some of the torques, what is applying a torque? Well, fx and fy don't. Right? It's always good to put your axis of rotation somewhere where there's some forces, because that'll take them out of the equation and make your algebra simpler. So I put it here, because that eliminates fx and fy. No torque when they're on, they're applied at the axis of rotation. So we just have mg. Uh, pulling it down, that's clockwise, so that's negative, minus L over 2 mg. We do the full cross product, but it's going to be the sine of negative 90. That's why it's negative. Negative 1 is the sine L over 2 mg. The torque here is the one pulling it up. So uh, we say plus, um, and this torque is being applied at a distance L. And we can use our trick. We can say it's really this vertical component that applies all the torque. It's kind of like that vertical line idea. So we can say uh, it's T sine theta times L. And it's positive because it's going counterclockwise. T sine theta times, well, L. That's a weird way to write it. T L sine theta. L T sine theta would be the normal way to write it. Um, that's those torques. And they must cancel to be 0. 
Yes. Okay. So you look at that, and that instantly gets you the answer for t. If that's really all you wanted, uh, then you got t because the l's cancel here, and this comes over there, and you say, I'm sorry, the l's cancel. So I put that on the wrong side. And you say t equals uh, mg over 2 sine theta. So you're kind of done. And you say, does this make sense? Well, let's see. Does it make sense? If I put the angle really low, you probably need a lot of tension, right? Because you need a lot of tension to hold the thing up to keep it, you know, there's a lot of torque wanting to rotate it this way. If you put the angle really low, you don't have much of a vertical component because sine theta is small. So you need a big hypotenuse, you need a big T. And that'll come out mathematically because if you put the angle really low, sine theta becomes small and T blows up, it goes to infinity when it's at 90 degrees. But just for fun, we could finish the problem. We could say also, what are the forces that the uh, building applies to the, uh, to the bar? Because you might need to know like what kind of a little pivot you need to put in there, what forces can it take? So you just start plugging this back into here, right? So this one uh, just has Fy in it. Um, well, this one's easier because there's no mg term. We'll do this one first. Fx equals t cosine theta. So fx equals t, which was uh, mg over 2 sine theta, uh, but times cosine theta, so it's mg over 2 tangent theta. Theta, so there's the force the building applies. And fy, let's see what that turns into. Um, fy is mg minus t sine theta. mg minus t, mg over 2 sine theta, right, times sine theta. Oh, in this case, they cancel. Right here, they made a tangent, but now they go away. So it's mg minus mg over 2. It's 1 half mg. So that's kind of interesting. For this problem, the building has to apply a force that's equal to half the weight of the bar in the y. The force that applies in the x depends on the angle, but in the y it'll always be the same. It just has to apply a force half of mg. So that's a static equilibrium problem, right? Like I promised, we ended up using three of the, only three of the equations were relevant. And if you pick your axis in the right place, they come out nice and easy. Pick your axis in the wrong place, and you might have a general three equations, three unknowns, which is still solvable, but not, not as easy.